This is the video that is going to blow your mind. I am so confident in this video that what I'm producing that if you're new to this channel, you will have subscribed by the end of this video. And as always, I would really appreciate if you left a like because that kind of stuff always really supports it. But this is it. This is what my work has been working towards. If you're new to this channel and you're just looking for ways to connect with guys or if you're, you're having problems going on dates or things like that, or you really want to know how to get the most out of your relationship, these are the four master keys. This is what my work has been working, like working towards and I am so excited to share with you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you these four master keys and I'm going to give you one little tip that you can do to implement them in your life which you will then see the benefit of straight away. This is one of those things that if you master these keys, and I will tell you more about the keys in a second, it's like you will know how to like melt any man, you'll know how to get him on like in, to do pretty much anything. As always though, here's the thing. If it can't be used for evil, then it isn't a superpower. So just like how I can give you a screwdriver and you can use it to like make some furniture, or you can use it to kill someone, I always have the value that you should always leave someone off better than how you found them. And if you're not going to use these next steps for, for good, then please like stop watching this video. If you are someone who is going to use this for good, who you're going to use it to improve your own life and the people of the life of the people around you, keep watching because I'm excited to share it with you. So you're still here, right? So I'm really excited that you're here. Uh, let's get into the four master keys. Let's get into the four master keys. Now with these four master keys, it is important to note, they do not go in any order. They do not have to cycle. They do not have to go one, two, three, A, B, C, all that kind of stuff. Some of them are some things that you should do more spread out. Some of them are things that you should do more focused. Like, you know, you do it once and it's really powerful and you do more than once and the guy's probably thinking like, why the hell do you keep saying that? Or why the hell do you keep doing that? But, and some of them actually overlap as well because some of the elements actually like, you know, overlap because they really work well together. And if you master these four things, you'll literally be able to, it's like voodoo magic. You'll be able to get any guy to do anything. Uh, it's insane. Um, use sparingly because this is the pinnacle of my work. And I will be producing a program in the future where I will go into details where I'll give you exact step to step guides of what to do, what to say, how to be, and that will get you the results that you want. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to give you one tip today, as well as these four master keys that will really help your dating life. Now, I cannot stress this enough. So little disclaimer warning, only use for good, don't use for evil. And uh, with that, let's get to the four master keys. So these are the keys that, as I said before, you don't have to use them in any particular order. But the first one is something that if you do it right, it will be something that will actually make the guy so interested in you at multiple levels that he, you, he will be blown away by you. And I'm stumbling over my words because I'm so excited to share this with you. But it's like, why does one guy like, like to be around you and then he just sleeps with you and then he leaves, right? And then another guy really wants to be around you, but he probably friend zones you or he just is interested in being your friend. The key is arousal. So let's take this a little bit deeper. Arousal in a very brief sense is excitement. What is excitement? Excitement is energy, excitement is motion, excitement is like looking forward to things. The thing is with arousal, there are different kinds of arousal. This is where the common misconception is, that people just think that arousal is sexual. But in all honesty, there's emotional, there's intellectual, there's spiritual. Since arousal means excitement, anything that creates excitement or energy in someone in some way is arousal. That is it in a nutshell. And 
Furthermore, energy from one form of arousal can easily be transferred to another form of arousal. I actually did a study recently where I asked a lot of people what got them turned on outside of sex or outside of thinking about sex or anything else. And a lot of people said things like if they were a salesman, closing the deal, for example. If they were into cooking, cooking turned them on or got them aroused in that sense. Uh, also things like wearing nice clothes, getting ready, like things like that, things that created energy actually turned people on because that energy then gets transferred. Even though it might have been visual arousal, that energy then still gets transferred because it is excitement, right? And excitement exists in the body, which then can be transferred around the body. But here's the thing, if you want a guy, since guys are very visual, we have this thing called the male gaze. Now, what, a guy, what happens with a guy is we will look at things and because we process emotion visually, we'll look at it and maybe objectify it because that's what something that we want. So also, have you ever gone to a gym where a guy's like stared at you and you're thinking like, oh, I don't want to, this guy to look at me, this is feeling a bit creepy, he's objectifying me. That's true, he's objectifying you. But also, did you know that guys actually stare at other guys because we're at a very subconscious level, we're thinking, well, we're objectifying these other guys and thinking that we want to be like those guys. Have you thought of that? So we process emotion visually. And there's actually part of our brain that like immediately switches on whenever we see a pretty lady. Um, but that's the reason why often guys like will have sex with you and then leave you is because they're not aroused emotionally. Now you can transfer that sexual arousal into emotional arousal, but it is important to note that what can happen is that is in, it is more powerful to emotionally arouse someone just as much as you physically arouse someone. And I'll get more into that later, but something you can do right now that will, that you can use both for like all the kinds of arousal is create what's called anticipation. Have you ever thought about it like where you're anticipating something like maybe you're thinking about some food and it just comes out and it's just amazing because you've been looking forward to it, right? Similarly, at the first half of this video, I probably spent more time talking about the four master keys and about them and about how exciting they are than actually talking about the master keys. Did you notice that? So similarly, what you can do is create anticipation and one simple line, you can use that is say your example going on a date and you're really looking forward to it. You can just say something like, you know what, I'm really looking forward to seeing you later, but maybe afterwards I'll give you more things to look forward to. Powerful stuff. Here is a big thing, and I could make a whole video on this, but I'm just gonna give you this because I really want you to get value from this video. If this is the only video you ever watch of me, I'm, I'm happy because you will have gotten something out of this. The next big thing will actually allow him to be relaxed around you. Because what happens is, and you might have this as well, is that guys have, even at a subconscious level, they have a thing called alarm bells, where we see a girl, we're interested in her, we maybe go on a date with her. So a few things will actually create alarm bells in our head. Maybe we're someone who values independence, right? And uh, we look at this girl, we're like, all right, she's really cool. But then all of a sudden she starts saying things like, you know, you should meet my family, you should meet my kids. And we're just thinking like, hey, I just met you. And this is crazy, but we've gone on one date and you want me to meet your family? <laughs> like, oh, uh, pretty much this next thing will overcome that entirely. Now, this is something that is so powerful that when you use this, you'll be literally be able to get the guy to do anything because if he's one aroused in one way or another to be around you and excited to be around you, so remember arousal is excitement, this next thing will solidify it and make it so it doesn't like explode his head because arousal is kind of like filling the balloon with air. Uh, this next part is the actual balloon which holds it all together. And the next part is comfort. Dun, da, da, da. Now, comfort is one of those things that is incredibly important because if you don't do it, he'll probably freak out and run away. But if you do do it right, and again, the right amount, not too much because you need to balance out all these four master keys. He'll actually be comfortable already around you. All these little things that you're worried about that you think might scare him away will actually just like he'll be relaxed around you. And if you're someone who wants him to do other things like maybe meet your family, maybe move towards more of a relationship if you want that, if you just want maybe a casual thing, uh, this is how you do it as well. Um, but it's about creating comfort for those ideas and escalating slowly. Now, one thing you can do right now on a date is if you wanna make a guy really comfortable with you, we do this, and this, you can actually do this with anyone. Like if you have a business partner or whatever, it's what's called bouncing. 
Now, when you go on a date with someone, you probably spend one time like in a particular cafe or something like that, or maybe at a bar. What you can do is then bounce that person around that bar or that cafe or bounce to multiple things. Bouncing is literally the process of moving one person from one stage to another stage. And when you bounce that person, what happens is they create more experiences with you because they're experiencing you at, you know, maybe by the door, maybe sitting down in one place, maybe at another bar. And suddenly, if you went on one date where you would have more than uh, one experience, you will create more than one experience and that person will feel so much more comfortable around you. Now, if you just do this, you don't have to really worry about being too much for the guy because some people worry about that where they feel like they're way too much for a guy and they freak him out or things like that. If he's comfortable enough with you, all those things just iron out. Another thing you can do that will actually really act as a subconscious bouncing is start a date before sunset. And then when the sun sets, it's like you've spent so much time with the guy that he'll just be thinking like, holy shit, uh, we've been before sunrise and out sunset. It's been like a whole day. It's been insane. Shit. Bouncing. Comfort. So good. Now, the next thing works in conjunction with arousal and with comfort. And if you don't do this, he's not going to want to see you again. And if you do do this, he'll want to see you. He'll be addicted to you. And it's one of those things that you have to do sparingly. Uh, because if you do it too much, he'll, he'll, it'll come off across as weird and like obnoxious. You just come across as this person who's like maybe hiding things. Um, but if you do do this correctly, and I will teach you how to do this correctly. But if you do do this correctly, what will happen is he will just be like so thirsty to see you again. It'll be insane. So have you ever been in a situation where you've been so thirsty as soon as you just see water, you just want to drink it and drown yourself in it? That's what's gonna happen when he, he will be anticipating the next time he sees you. And this works really well with arousal because you can use these techniques, the next technique that I give you, but it will actually work in conjunction with arousal and actually turn him on in different levels as well as doing what I will about to tell you. And this next master key is, yeah. So the next master key is something that is so minute, but, it's like an hourglass that every time you do this, a little bit more drops down, a little bit more drops down. And as you do this a little bit more and more and more, he will get more interested in you. He'll get more excited by you and he'll naturally like you without even realizing this next master key plays on the law of reciprocation, which is literally, we like things that give us things, but also naturally, if we give something to someone, we naturally like them. Now, if you don't do this next thing, what will happen is he will think he can just do anything he wants with you. And then in the end of the day, it'll just, you'll just be someone who's entered in his life and he like didn't really matter to him. So this next key is Oh, I should I should tell them, shouldn't I? The next key is investment. You see, the more someone invests in you, the more likely they're to see it through. There's the old analogy that if, they are, if a knight climbed up a mountain and fought a dragon to get his princess, chances are when it comes down to it, he's not gonna wanna fight another dragon to get another princess. He's gonna stick around because he's gonna be like thinking, holy shit, this was hard to get to. Similarly, investment is one of those things that starts really small. We have what's known as an investment ladder where you can actually step up things because more often than not, you know, I know a lot of women have really high standards and I love that and they want to go from here to here. But you know, when you have a car, right, and you want to drive it really fast, you have to start at zero to get to a hundred and investment is how you do it. So the more someone invests in you, the more likely they are to like you and they're going to want to see the rest of the relationship through. Now, investment is one of those things that can can be huge. For example, if someone gives you a gift, that's a pretty big investment. If someone spends time with you, that's a pretty big investment. But investment is also things like dates. If someone has a date with you, that's a huge investment of themselves and they're potentially seeing it through, right? People don't go on dates because they just wanna like fuck around. People go on dates because that's an investment of their time because they're interested in you potentially. Now, what you can do to create investment in your current situation, which is something you can do right now, is actually create an investment loop. So something that someone can actually jump 
through and when they do you reward them and they actually feel excited to be around you right so something you can do something very simple you can start this off at any point in the relationship where you can just be like hey so and so here's the real question so it's a lot of pressure you put a lot of pressure on this one question so it's it feels like it's a make or break question here's the real thing are you an x or are you a y and then when they say something you can either disagree or agree and that creates the conversation so you could say here's the thing are you a nutella person are you a peanut butter person or if you're in australia are you a vegemite person and they might say nutella and you could be like well I'll have to uh, let you go on this one. Even though it's completely non-serious uh, non at all, but that little form of micro-investment, because there's a little bit of pressure and a little bit of reward, that's exciting. For the, that's exciting for the other, because there's a little bit of investment, a little bit of reward, that's exciting for the other person. So this is the kind of thing that when you have loops for people to jump through, they're gonna naturally like you more. Now, the other thing is you can create these loops in an imaginary way, but you can also create them in a very social way. For example, I know people that potentially wanna create more of a, a family-related relationship, or they wanna you know, be able to hang out with their friends with their partner, and their partner is like, no, 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 like no friends just yet, I'm not ready for it. If you're in that situation, you create a loop for them to jump through the investment paradigm. Another thing you could say in that situation is just saying something like, hey, I've got this party that I'm going to, it could be really lame, but I'd really like you to come with me. Because when you say something like that, you're suggesting that he's gonna make the party, uh, but it's also, one, it's putting pressure off the friends, which is what you really want. You really want him to mingle with your friends. Uh, but in this case, you actually are saying, hey, like, you know, uh, come with me to be fun because you'll be there, which is kind of a compliment. So that's creating also a little bit more comfort. And, uh, but, the other key thing here is knowing that when he does that, that's him investing in you and therefore he's, you're unlocking that little bit more of potential in the relationship. This is powerful stuff. So this next thing, if you don't do it, you're leaving things to chance. And when you leave things to chance, they don't necessarily go your way. You might be friend zoned, you might be put in a situation where he's not that into you, or you might be put in a situation where he just loves you and leaves you, or he might not wanna do something with you that you've been really wanting to do with him for a while. And again, with everything, this is voodoo magic. You can use this with someone that you know right now, and you will see the results. What it is, is controlled qualification. Now, first of all, what is qualification? Qualification is where you find something about someone that you like about them, and then you tell them. You're like, hey, I think you're adventurous. That's really cool, right? But controlled qualification, here's the voodoo magic. If you think that what you need in a guy is someone who's more adventurous, chances are a lot of guys are adventurous, but they're just not showing you that personality of themselves. What I used to always say is just say something like, well, if there's something that a guy does for you, you should let him know. And then I remember at my last speech I did, someone was actually joking about it where they, where they were like, oh, I, I told a guy what I, I liked him to do and he just never stopped doing it, wink. This is the same thing, but controlled qualification is intentional qualification, where you tell them something that you like because you actually want them to do that for you. And this is the one you gotta be careful with. You can't use this all the time. This is one of those things when you really want someone to do something for you, and it'll, again, it works with all of them because when he does it, it'll create investment, it'll create comfort as well because you're complimenting him in a way that brings out the best value that you want. And also creates interest because it's like, oh, this is interesting, she actually likes me for this particular reason. But say you want someone to be more creative or be more adventurous or things like that. You tell that to them, but in a way that like qualifies that particular feature that you like. That's the voodoo magic. And I can't believe I'm even saying this online because people could misconstrue this. So I, with everything I say, use this for good. I cannot stress this enough. But here's an example that you can use right now. Again, this, can't, this actually can't be used all the time. As I say, this has to be used in this very specific moment. But what you can do is just say something, like if you want the guy to be more adventurous, you then 
tell him in real life something like, hey guy, uh, you know what I really like about you? Is that you're actually really adventurous. Like you, you like to do things that, you know, push yourselves and push your comfort zone. And it might just be things like him trying new restaurants, even though that's not really that adventurous. Like relative, to me that's not adventurous. But, but to you, you probably want someone who's more adventurous. So you qualify that aspect of him that is adventurous so he wants to do that more. Because literally when you qualify someone, they feel good. You might tell someone like, you know what, what I really love about you is the fact that you're really creative, like you really put a lot of effort into things that you do, like a lot of fine detail. And that's what I really like about you. But when you say that, it's complimenting them and then it like suggests that if they want more compliments like this, they then have to do stuff that is more creative and more eye to detail. Because you know what, how, if you, if your guy had more eye, like eye, an eye for detail, it probably isn't a bad thing. He probably noticed things that you put an effort to that he probably doesn't notice before. Like how many guys don't notice a girl when he changes their hair? I personally don't know because I'm colorblind, but, and unless it's like someone goes from an afro to like straightening their hair, uh, I'll never notice. In all honesty, I'll, I'll do my best. But if you then qualify someone who's in that same situation, if you say, hey, I really like your eye for detail, you know, you, you really like put an effort what you wear, that means he's gonna be creatively qualified. He's gonna be thinking like, oh, I feel good because I have an eye for detail. That's really good. Voodoo magic. Anyway, if you did like this video, make sure to leave a like because that really supports this channel. That really grows it. I'm just trying to get the word out there. I'll be having my next event very soon. Uh, but if you are interested in learning more about this, make sure to um, click here or in the description below that will allow you to do the quiz, which is the what kind of guy is most attracted to you quiz, which will put you on my mailing list, which I will tell you when I'm next in your city. I will also tell you when I'm releasing the hook point product so you can learn detailed how to do these steps and apply it in your life now rather than later so you can get the results that you want. See ya.